and run the fucking numbers. If it's less than $2 million by the end of 2020, then mathematics itself is a flawed discipline. In November 2018, John McAfee flew all the way to Europe to attend the Malta AI BC Summit and on the topic of decentralized exchanges and economic freedom, he said this. We still have centralized exchanges, which can be shut down by governments. That's the power that they hold over us. If we do not adhere to their regulations and rules, then they can shut us down. In two years, we will have decentralized exchanges. And now it's an absolute pleasure to have John McAfee on the line. John, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me. I, I'm old and bored and have nothing else to do, so uh, I'm happy to be on. So why not? Why not have a catch up? 2019, it has been a crazy year. How's 2019 been for you so far? Well, I mean, 2019 has been a very good year. I mean, it has not been a good year for the uh, the crypto market and, and uh, Bitcoin and alt currencies, um, but it's been a bit a very good year for building the foundation for 2020, which is going to be the year of explosion uh, for Bitcoin and Ethereum and Monero, the entire cryptocurrency world. So, uh, um, I think that the preparation and the um, the activities that are going on in 2019 will bear fruit very quickly in the early 2020. When you say explosion, do you mean price? Do you mean adoption? Do you mean uh, kind of global coverage? What kind of thing are you expecting to be the explosion? Well, I mean, we'll certainly see if, if an increase in adoption. I think I think cryptocurrency has reached a critical mass. I mean. Th- there are very few people left in the world who've never heard the word, okay? <laughs> and many of those who have heard Bitcoin or cryptocurrency that knew nothing more than the word have learned a great deal in 2019 about the truth of what this is, this, this new phenomenon. So I, I think in terms of adoption, 2020 is going to be a, a great year. Uh, in terms of technology and and functionality, I think 2019 has seen the year of the distributed exchange. Now there are many of them out there, and and all of them uh, are are great projects. Um, but I think that um, and I've been in touch with everybody. Everybody who's building, trust me, a, a, a distributed exchange. I have been intimately involved with, or certainly in. 90% of the cases at the least. Um, and, and the only way that we can do it, uh, a, a truly distributed exchange, is by um, using the blockchains of blockchains that support smart contracts. Uh, I don't know any other way to do it. I mean, to, to make it both fast enough, I mean, atomic swap, what a terrific technology, however. <laughs> It doesn't work in a practical sense from a time standpoint. I mean, the only thing really is smart contracts. What a, what a tremendous idea. Coding and programming on the blockchain that allows you to create something that can't ever be changed. I mean, do you understand the beauty of that? That if you do create a distributed exchange on the Ethereum blockchain, or, or EOS or NEO or Tron or you name something, um, then that can ever be shut down. Now, you can shut down the access points, but what we have done with the McAfee Dex is we have uh, an unlimited number of access points that we simply call portals, okay? You, you have a, your own domain name and you want to be a distributed exchange for $395. We will slap your logo in the upper left corner and give you, uh, you know, either a, a white background or a dark background and a few other things. And that's your only cost. And then you're up and running forever. So to attempt to shut down a true distributed exchange like McAfee Dex is not possible. You, you can't do it because you can't, you can't change what is already on the blockchain. 
the system is trustless, so you don't give a flying hoot who you're doing the transaction with. It's all protected by the smart contracts. And governments, who do they shut down? Me? I've got nothing to do with it after I've created it. I don't control who accesses it. I don't ask anybody's phone numbers or names or, or email addresses. Nothing. It is a free for all. Now, to be fair, in a free for all where there is no control, it is up to you as the seller or buyer to do your own due diligence. I mean, if someone comes and creates a token or a coin on our exchange, we've got no control over it. It's a button on the top of our screen saying, create new token. That's fine, go ahead and do it. Now, if you're a scammer, I'm sorry, it is your responsibility as the user of the system to determine that. If you don't want to, to risk, then hang with all the stable things, the DAI, and academic, NERC20 token, or as we progress uh, before the end of the year, uh, Tron, uh, Binance, uh, EOS, and NEO, and so on. Um, it, just deal with the top 10, okay? <laughs> I don't know. But since we have no control, we can't protect you. That's the, this is the balancing act that, that, that is the decentralized exchange. No government control, no monitoring by the feds, by banks, by any regulatory agency, no control whatsoever, including me, but you're on your own. If you do not have the courage and the intelligence to determine and understand what you are doing, then <laughs> Well, you will get fucked. And when we look at economic freedom, decentralized exchanges are probably one of the closest things on the market today that we can get from this. So when we look at trading volumes on decentralized exchanges, how are they performing so far? Do we think it's something that maybe the mass public and the majority of the public aren't ready to be 100% completely in control of their own assets? It seems like a really overwhelming concept for a lot of people. No, 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 absolutely not. I mean, trading volumes are small because people don't understand them. And almost all of the distributed exchanges, including mine, and, and mine is in beta test, by the way, do not provide the functionality of centralized exchanges. However, in six months, I promise you, we will. We will have multiple chains and cross-change interaction. Zero listing fees, the smallest ex exchange fees in on the planet, and no control, no monitoring, and absolute freedom. I promise you, this will become the standard. Why? Nobody wants people monitoring their financial transactions. How much money they make, how much money they spend, and where? how much goes out, how much comes in, and to whom? No, people do not want that, I'm sorry. If you believe they do, you're wrong. They're using centralized exchanges because there is nothing else. <laughs> Even my exchange does not give you the, the sophistication and the capabilities of Binance. But I promise you, I promise you, <laughs> by April of next year, it will. Zero listing fees, total functionality. Then at that point, which one would you choose? You want to go on Binance, give them a copy of your passport or your driver's license, your bank information, your social security number in some cases, uh, certainly your name and your email address, your age perhaps. Which one would you choose? <laughs> I'm, just being, I'm just being serious. Right now. now you've referred to smart contracts as one of the greatest things on the blockchain. So at the moment, the beta exchange does take DERC20 tokens and it does have plans to integrate everything else. It doesn't matter to us which blockchain we start on because the logic uh, and the processing is the same virtually for all blockchains. But we chose Ethereum. Why? It's the most coins in the universe. So we started with Ethereum. Um, the um, 
the technology is here to add every blockchain to uh, uh, to do cross chain transactions um, and what else do we need? I mean, there is nothing else technologically required for a distributed exchange. What I expect to see in the future are advances in our user interfaces, our interoperability and interconnectedness, and, and that's it. I mean, we have today the basis and the foundation of the future distributed and decentralized exchange uh, in McAfee Dex and, and the 15 other portals that have already signed on and implemented their portal into our smart contracts. So the, the, um, the, the future technology is, is going to be mostly in ease of use, which is what we've needed all along. I mean, what keeps the average plumber or housewife or um, you know door-to-door -door salesman from using crypto? It's because our interfaces are designed for technologists, for the developers. People understand what a blockchain is, and on and on. Oh, this is way too deep for the average, <laughs> the average user. We have to have something that is a blank screen and you don't need to know anything about cryptocurrency other than people who are using it and everybody's reporting great success. And that's it. And you, you log into some screen which doesn't ask you things like wallet address, <laughs> address. No, you have common names. You're, you're John or Susie or Ted. And if from Ted's wallet to, to Jim's wallet, and that's all you need. And, and it's, it's trivial to get from where we are today to what I'm describing. And so next year, 2020, I promise you, you will see a new set of user interfaces and accesses into the blockchain and cryptocurrency that a three-year-old could figure out in a couple of days time. So you said 2020 is the big year for cryptocurrencies and the space as a whole. If we look at price for 2020, does the prediction still stand for one Bitcoin to hit one million US dollars? Oh, um, absolutely. Okay, look, will, will you please people consider something <laughs> which everybody ignores. There are only 21 million Bitcoins. And every day, millions of dollars in Bitcoins are lost. Why? People can't remember their keys, their wallet address. They lose the smartphone or the laptop that they, they originally bought their Bitcoins on. Those are gone forever. Bitcoin only has 14 million coins left. And there's only... There's only three million to be mined. And while those are being mined, we're losing Bitcoins at an alarming rate because people are lazy, foolish, or stupid, one of the three. So you have an eternally diminishing supply and an eternally increasing demand if people continue to use Bitcoin for buying things. For God's sake, people, go back to 10th grade mathematics when you first learned things like algebra and run the fucking numbers. If it's less than $2 million by the end of 2020, then mathematics itself is a flawed discipline. Now, you have been an advocate in saying that you're more into spending Bitcoin than actually investing and holding onto Bitcoin. So can you talk us through some of the most wild things that you have purchased using cryptocurrency? Something I've purchased with Bitcoin? <laughs> okay. Multiple SUVs, a Corvette. Um, uh, oh, oh uh, uh, a, um, 
Bentley, okay, a Bentley, a house, um, drugs, gold, um, you fucking name it. There is nothing you cannot purchase with Bitcoin if you want to do the research. I mean, you name something, or possibly shoelaces you can. I don't know. I have not researched either shoes or shoelaces. But everything else in life, if you are willing to do the research on Google, is purchasable by Bitcoin. Now, you currently have a competition running until the end of October where one winner can spend one day with John McAfee himself. What can they expect from that day? What kind of things are they expecting to see? Oh, what do people expect? <laughs> Whoa. What do people expect from spending a day with me? Listen, I wish I could tell you, but since I do not know what any of my days are going to portend, I mean, it can be anything from having a cup of coffee and, and you know, maybe a dinner uh, to shooting at a shooting range to running from authorities. I'm sorry, I can guarantee what that day will be. Well, John, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to catch up and I think this is a really exciting time. The future is now. We'll have to catch up in April of 2020 and see how the exchange is looking. But best of luck and thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much for having me on. I've, I've enjoyed it. We'll talk to you later. Thank you very much. And we hope to see you at our next event as well. Thank you. All right, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Well, that's all for myself and John McAfee. We'd love to hear how you found this segment. Are you going to apply for a day with the man himself? Let us know in the comments below.